So now on to section 2.2. This section is going to focus on a, a few new definitions and on this new idea of a biconditional statement. And we have one thing you're going to hopefully have, haven't if you haven't figured out, is definitions are pretty big deal in geometry. We yeah, we use a lot. A lot of them. And they're going to be used throughout the whole year. We're going to require you to make sure you understand these definitions. You don't necessarily need to memorize word for word, but definitely understand the meaning. Um, and then again, by conditional statements, um, this is another logic type statement. This is our final logic type statements. Okay. It's a little different than what we've seen, but you'll see some similarities. Um, now, first definition, and they throw this one in. It's not necessarily, again, goes with this whole section. It's just because we need, an, we need this definition. So perpendicular lines, we've seen this before, hopefully. These are any two lines, segments, rays, whatever, that intersect to form a right angle. Okay, so kind of get that idea. Now, Ms. Hograby, do we know for sure if those are perpendicular lines? They look like they may be, but in geometry, we can never go by just what they look like. But how, do I, how do I show in a picture just to convince you that those are perpendicular lines? Well, usually we see like that little box or square oh. in that corner, in one of the corners. And the reason why that is is because it's a of that idea. Okay. A right angle, that's how you show a right angle. Now, the word perpendicular itself, because we're going to use it quite a bit, um, it's kind of a long word, so we have a symbol for it, like a oh, lot of things good. in math. Yeah. And we're smart. We don't like to rewrite all those long uh -huh. words if we don't have to. And that symbol is basically an upside down capital T. Okay. Easy enough. This next definition um, throws in this idea of perpendicular again. Um, this is something we'll see more, uh, more later in second semester, uh, but just kind of making sure we have it in our basis. It says line perpendicular to a plane. It says the line that intersects a plane in a point, it is perpendicular to every line in that plane that intersects it. Okay, so like if we drew a plane and we drew a line that was perpendicular to that, so, so it would have to go through there. Mm -hmm. So that whole idea of that little dashed or dotted show it's perpendicular. So then if I draw any other line that intersects that on the plane, oh, well, of course it would be perpendicular yeah. to it. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's kind of the idea. All right. When we're talking about definitions, and we threw in a couple definitions to be able to talk about them today, but when we talk about definitions, what we need to be aware of is that they can be interpreted forward and backward. So, for example, we've got our perpendicular line definition. It said perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form a right angle. So, I can interpret that forward and backward. I could write that a couple of different ways if I wanted to make a conditional statement out of this. Ah, which means you have to throw in the words if and then, right? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Palermo, do you think you can do that? All right. So, we're starting with... Maybe the hypothesis, the beginning part, would be talking about perpendicular lines and having two lines. So if two lines are perpendicular, and then we're going to conclude they're going to intersect to form a right angle. That's perfect. So if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right angle. So I can make a conditional statement out of this. But notice it says that it can be interpreted forward and backward So that's also. more the forward. That's the forward. That's just reading it as you see and, and it. That, and then we consider that the conditional statement. Okay. Right. Now, what is... What do you think by backward? What do you think they mean by backward? Well, I would think it would be kind of flipping the if and then. Yeah, is, we talked about that the which other Which is called the converse. The converse. All so, right, so how would I write the converse of this? If thing? they, no, if not if they, if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular. Lovely. So every time that you look at a definition, I want you to realize that you can read it the way that it's written, as well as the reverse of that. So you can start with two lines that intersect to form, or two lines that are perpendicular and know that they intersect to form a right angle, or you could start with two lines that you see are intersecting to form a right angle and know that they're perpendicular. And these ideas, just to give you guys a heads up, this is going to really help us when we get to proving things, knowing what am I starting with, what am I in ending with, yeah, which is because the proof. If I, if I know that I've got two perpendicular lines, I know something about them because of this definition. Or if I have two lines that are intersecting to form a right angle, I know something about them because of this definition. Perfect. 
Now, this leads in great into this idea of a biconditional statement, which is, our again, our final type of logic statement. Uh, a biconditional statement, uh, notice it has that word conditional in it, so maybe it has something to do with that. It's a statement that contains the phrase if and only if. So, you're not going to see the if, and, if the and the then this okay, time. Okay, so it's going to look a little different. Yeah, so it's not going to start with if and say something then and then say something. It's actually going to start with whatever word, it, just depending on what it's dealing with. And it, in the middle of it, you're going to see if and only if. And we're going to go back and show you that on the last slide. Okay. It's equivalent to writing a conditional and its converse. And oh, that's kind of like what we just talked about with definitions. Exactly. It can be true or false. Most of the time, we're going to focus when it's true, we're going to do more with it. Okay. It's going to be more useful to us. Okay. If it is true, or in order for it to be, both the conditional and the converse must be true. Now, we saw we saw in um, the last section that conditional and converse, sometimes one is true, the other one's false. But for the biconditional to be true, the conditional has to be true and it's converse. So we talked about equivalent truth values the other day. So if the conditional statement's true, that also meant the contrapositive was going to be true, exactly. right? Exactly. And if the converse is true, then the inverse is going to be true. So really, that would mean all of the statements were going to be true. All four of them would be true in the end. Okay. But just to hit on that, and I like that Ms. Hoker is refreshing here, um, again, the biconditional focuses on these Just those two. two. Okay. And so we don't have any knots in there. No. And the big thing is these are the most popular. Okay. And then that leads into biconditional. They're the next most popular type of statement. So going back, Mrs. Hogravy mentioned from the last slide that we just talked about that the uh, definition can be written as a conditional and a converse. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take this definition of perpendicular, or we could take any definition. And we're going to take this and make it look like an if then if and only statement, which is a biconditional. Okay. Right now it's not. So you said, like, for example, if I look at the number one here that we have listed, yep. which is the conditional statement, if I took out the words if and then. And if I do that, I'm just going to mark them out and mark this one out. And you said where the then goes, that's where our if and only if is going to be. You're exactly right. So then we would read this as two lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form a right angle. Oh, okay. That's and it's easy enough. And if you think about it, did that really change the actual meaning of the definition? No. No. It just threw in Some new words. New words. Maybe it has a different look, but it still means the same thing. And okay. because definitions can be interpreted forward and backwards, this biconditional statement allows us to condense from two separate things into one. Okay. And you can think about reading it forwards or backwards.